there are precautions that Allah has given us and guidance that Allah has given us to stop us from reaching that point of no return. And uh, we have to try to not, not just refrain from sins, but refrain from those things. Re we have to refrain from thinking of sinning. It should become something which we would never even think of. The Marasumin, the infallible Imams, were once asked, how can you be infallible? It doesn't make sense. How can you be infallible? The infallible Imam replied that, look, he pointed to like a carcass on the ground, a dead animal. There were maggots and flies. It was disgusting. It stank. Okay. And uh, the Imam said, would you eat that? Okay. So the man said, no, hell no, of course not. So the Imam said, the way that that looks disgusting to you, all sins look disgusting to us because we can see clearly. The, so what we gather from a hadith like this is the issue is within our own eyes, the way that we view things. I don't know if you guys were there for the previous discussion, but we actually said there that one of the things that the Dajjal will do is he will make the disease look beautiful. That's one of the things that he does. That's why he's the great deceiver. Shaitan will do this. He will clothe sickness and disease in making it look beautiful. We have to recognize and see that things are disguised as beautiful, but they're actually disgusting. Remember the hadith of Imam Ali alayhi salam, where he describes the dunya like a snake. And he says, look, it might look smooth and perfect, uh, but within there is deadly poison. So the first thing that I'd say is change your perspective. Those things which are being promoted for us, and, and you'll see lots of people rushing to those things, and that automatically has an effect on our minds and makes us think that that thing is good, right? So uh, you'll see all these people going towards alcohol, and uh, you'll see your friends going towards drugs, you'll see people going towards uh, uh, premarital relations and all these kinds of different sins, and you'll think to yourself, well, if they're all going towards it, it must be something good. Not necessarily. People are stupid. And the Quran keeps on emphasizing this point for us. Most of them don't know. They know only a little bit of the apparent nature of this world, but they're completely heedless of the hereafter, of what the reality of things actually are. Most people are silly. They will go towards self-destruction. And if we just contemplate over this a little bit, look at how humans are prone to destroying themselves. It's not something that we can argue is like inherent there because Allah hasn't actually you know, inspired that thing. No, it's Iblis that has inspired it. And, and this will go deeper and deeper if you just think about it for a moment. Uh, even if you go into biology, it's incredible. And you can actually think about this. What is cancer? If we do, smoking cigarettes is not a sin, but I mean, through this analogy, we can actually understand. Uh, it's not haram to be smoking, right? Uh, tobacco, but like fiqh from the fiqh perspective. But through this analogy, let me paint this picture for you. What is cancer? Cancer, like viruses, you can understand. Viruses are something which come from the outside world and they affect your body and they harm you like a poison and they cause the body to destroy it to get destroyed, but, and bacteria is like that, you know, but what is cancer? It's the body destroying itself. It's certain, because every cell in the human body has a nucleus and that nucleus contains a brain and it tells the, new, and it tells the cell what to do, which direction to go in, etc. And the cell actually tells itself to destroy itself. Or, or, or autoimmune uh, diseases, look at what I'm trying to, paint for you here is this idea that we can contemplate on that we are prone to self-annihilation there's movies that have been made about this right and, and it is really fascinating why do humans do it it's really strange and the quran keeps on asking these questions over and over again why why are you going toward that thing ask it to yourself think about it so the first thing is change your perspective realize that sins harm you they don't harm anybody else you can commit the worst of sin the world will not stop spinning the world will go on look what happened in karbala the worst of sins took place the grandson of the holy prophet was massacred and humiliated and his body was trampled upon 
and his women were taken captives and slaves and their hijabs were ripped off. Think about the sins that took place. Qiyamah, if you're asking about Qiyamah, Qiyamah has pretty much already taken place. Look, the world continued. And Sayyidah Zainab said, Ma ra'aytu illa jamila. I saw nothing but beauty. For one person, the same event is a complete adab. It's destroying that person. And for another person, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, it's taking them closer and closer to God. How beautiful is that? So change your perspective. Number one, change it. Realize that sins are harming you, nobody else. Even if your sin is hurting somebody, that person can actually take it in a positive way and it will help them to get closer to Allah. So that's the first thing. The second thing is uh, just don't do it. It's, it's just, there's nothing more to it. There's nothing really else to it. Um, just don't. It, just make that decision. Yeah. Test it. Look, it says in the Quran, فَإِذَا رَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلَ عَلَى Allah. When you have made a decision, trust in Allah after that. And the third thing is, be very aware of the things that Islam has told us to do, which will help us to refrain from sins. For example, when it comes to sexual sins, um, Islam tells us to get married and get married young. There's a reason, and in fact, multiple reasons why Islam has told us to do this. There's a hadith that says that when a youth gets married, in his youth, when he gets married, if Police, the shaitan screams. He let out, out a loud scream. And there are other shields too. For example, lowering your gaze. That I believe it's a hadith. I'm not quite sure, so don't quote me on it. But it says that look, the eyes are a gateway to the heart. If you protect the eyes, you protect the heart. So be very careful of what you're looking at. Right? Be very careful of what you um, what you gaze at. Uh, be very conscious of the environment you're in as well. If you're hanging around with people for whom sins is completely normal and they're always doing it, eventually it is going to affect you. Okay. Uh, so yeah, these three things.